You know those YouTube channels where people just keep talking and talking and talking? Let's not become one of those channels. Well, it's too late for that. <laughs> Hey, and welcome back to Hootie Style Channel. I must say, I'm delighted and somewhat surprised by your interest in these videos. We're just really making them because we love the creative process, but let me tell you, your interest in these videos keeps the funometer rise. So, on the schedule today is my software strategy for Project Elizabeth. There are, I wouldn't say 100, but many ways to do what I'm doing with this mirror. So I'm going to show you somewhat of an overview of the communication paths I'm using and how that came to be. Just keep in mind, this episode is not a tutorial, but more of a guidance or suggestive presentation because I think there are too many parts here to explain in detail in one video. Instead, see this as a way to get ideas to the solutions you're looking for and also, I'm aware that some of you are hoping I'll explain how to get a voice assistant up and running and how you can make modules talk to each other on the mirror. And I won't make it impossible for you. So, how about this? If this video gets 3,000 likes, I'll make you an episode just about that. What, you want a discount? Okay, for you, my friend, 30 likes. And if we get stuck at 25 and you're still waiting for that episode, don't come blaming me. Go knock your neighbor's door and say, hey man, you need to like this video because we want that episode. And then you call your grandparents and tell them to like and subscribe as well because you want that episode. And then, honestly, if we don't hit 30 likes by then, we should just close this channel now. And if you think I'm being unfair, please let me know by pressing that like button. And in any other case, press like and subscribe. Okay, enough joking around. This is an overview of the services and data paths that I'm using and what we're talking about today. Just a short description of the services here. Porcupine is a local hot word detector. It runs locally, so no internets involved. Google Assistant, you are already familiar with. Domotix is a home automation software and Project Elizabeth is our mirror. IFTTT stands for if this, then that, which kind of is self-explanatory. It's an online applet service which will trigger actions and commands depending on what conditions and rules you set up in your applets. Now let's see what happens when we start giving commands to our mirror. Jarvis, max out the lights in the kitchen. Our data journey starts with Porcupine, made by PicoVoice. Porcupine is a local hot word detector, so no online listening for your hot word. And the moment we say Jarvis, Porcupine will activate the Google Assistant, which then will start listening. And there's a beauty in this setup, because if you are a bit paranoid and feel like Google can listen in on you at any time, which they probably do, this prevents that from happening. The reason is that Porcupine owns the audio stream until it triggers with your hot word. No other process can take over your microphone stream until it has been released from Porcupine. At which moment Google Assistant can take over. However, if Porcupine triggers falsely, then all your voice is belong to Google. But if that's a problem, you probably shouldn't have a voice assistant at all. Anyway, with Google Assistant activated, our commands are then sent to IFTTT. Mm, T. And if there is an applet there that can be triggered, it will. And whatever you have decided to happen will happen. In this case, max out the lights in the kitchen triggers an applet on my IFTTT that sends a command for voice response back to Google Assistant, which will also show up on Project Elizabeth. And at the same time, a command is sent from the applet to Domotix for the action itself. There can also be commands going specifically to Project Elizabeth for when I need a visual response. For example, for when we are changing views. IFTTT is not bound to Google Assistant. There are loads of different service providers that are connected to IFTTT, so go check their website out if you still haven't done that. And that is what my solution looks like. So now in 2022, 
where Google has a lot of home automation tie-ins, why don't I just move over the entire project to Google Assistant? Because one, what's the fun in that? And two, we have a huge mix of devices and different protocols and hardware in our home. And in this way, I just have better control. For all of the devices to work with Google Assistant, we'd have to get a multi-hub like Homey, for example. And even then we'd have to say commands like, hey Google, tell Homey to turn off the lights in the living room. It just doesn't feel like natural speech. Now let me take you back to 2016 when the idea of Project Elizabeth started sprouting. 2016 doesn't feel like long ago, but back then the Google Assistant wasn't all that tied into third-party services as it is now. For example, today you can set up Google Assistant to tie in with your Philips Hue stuff and tell Google Assistant to turn off the lights and it will just work. This wasn't the case back in 2016. At that time, I was renovating our apartment and while installing a click dimmer, you know, the ones where you have to push and wait and then never really know when to release. They're so awful. Just give me a turn knob I can dim the lights with in one turn, right? But not all transformers, not that type of transformers, work with turn knob dimmers. So I realized this was a great opportunity for us to automate things in the apartment. Having a Raspberry Pi lying around, I chose to install Domotix. Domotix is a lightweight, free, open source home automation software that can be installed on ARM devices like Raspberry Pis, NOS devices, or PCs running Linux or Windows. It's not really the most user-friendly of the home automation softwares out there, but it can be kind of low-level gritty and gives you a lot of control if you want it. So done and done, I got Domotix running. And from that single light that absolutely needed dimming, we went to a whole apartment that really did not need to get automated, but was so anyway, because it's just cool. So back to 2016. Playing around with Domotix, I realized I could send JSON commands across the net and make things happen around the home. Together with this epiphany came 1001 ideas, which led me to IFTTT. So many T's, now I gotta get me some more tea. In IFTTT, you can catch your phrase from Google Assistant and use that phrase to send the command back to your home. So for example, I could say, turn off my desk light, and in IFTTT, catch this phrase and send an off command for that light back home. And boom, so there I was, home automation with voice control in 2017. However, picking your phone up every time and having to say, hey Google this, hey Google that, it just wasn't practical, okay? And practical is what it's all about. So the idea of building a small smart mirror had already been growing in my mind for a while and I just didn't have a real purpose for it until that point. That same year, Google decided to release the Google Assistant SDK. Needless to say, I was all over it. Hey Google, how far is Stockholm from here? If you drive, it's 463 kilometers away. Right. Hey Google, turn off my desk light. Turning off your desk light. At that point, in the middle of the night, Project Elizabeth was born. Everything with this project proceeded in steps of proof of concept, so I made sure I could achieve something, then I let it go and moved on to see if I could achieve the next step and so on. And when I knew what I wanted was doable, I started putting them together to form Project Elizabeth. But like I've mentioned before, I've had to make so many revisions because third-party conditions changed during the different stages of the project. And since I did things in steps, when I came back to those steps where I thought previously things were possible, all of a sudden things proved to be not possible. For example, Google Assistant SDK changed, I think in 2018. And nowadays you can no longer say, hey Google or okay Google to start commands. You have to use a physical button or something like that to activate your assistant. The community had to work hard to find ways around this limitation. And me myself, I was going nuts for a while with all these constant changes and trying to find ways around them. The assistant problems delayed this project by probably a whole year 
if not longer. Every time I managed to fix something, something else started acting out, wasn't reliable or didn't pass the Hootie style quality control. Luckily, there are some very awesome developers out there and the thing that fixed the whole assistant mess for me in the end was a module called MMM Google Assistant by Cédric Dupont. Man, if you're watching this, thank you so much for sharing your hard work. I will make an episode just about that module and how to set an assistant up because that stuff really works. Anyway, that's enough talking. I hope you liked today's episode and most importantly, that it gave you ideas. This is Hootie, Hootie Style Channel, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode. Hootie Style Channel Hootie Style Channel